One of the most distinctive features of the classic 1940s Wurlitzer jukeboxes are the bubble tubes. I think it's the first thing that people notice about them. So today I thought it might be interesting to take a little time and try to explain what they look like and how they work. First off, they're not filled with water, as I've heard some people say. But instead it's an organic solvent called methylene dichloride. Uh, it's an unusual chemical uh, used in paint strippers. It's supposed to be carcinogenic. Uh, it's very toxic. But it, the main reason that we use it is that it boils at 103 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a very low temperature. Bear in mind, water boils at 212 degrees. The methylene dichloride, in its natural state, is crystal clear, has no color. Uh, when these tubes are made, however, an amber dye is put into the dichloromethane to make the bubbles uh, more evident. Now let's take a trip out to the workshop where I have one of these straight bubble tubes out of a jukebox. We'll take a close look at how it's made and then I'm going to hook it up uh, and show you how they're made to boil in the jukebox and we'll monitor it while it boils. We'll check the temperatures and we'll see for ourselves how Wurlitzer bubble tubes function. This bubble tube is one from the lower uh, parts of the front door of a Wurlitzer 1015. Uh, like all bubble tubes, it started its life as a piece of one half inch diameter glass tubing, uh, about in this case about 30 inches long. The end down here is sealed, then uh, some semi-transparent crystals are placed in here to generate the bubbles uh, when this bulb is heated, and uh, then there, this area is pinched in here to restrict the crystals to the lower uh, part down here in this bulb. There's a little piece of, uh, a clear piece of tubing that the bubbles will pass through. Then they'll travel up the glass rod until they reach this upper area. And you notice there is an empty place up here at the top to allow for the expansion of the dichloromethane. The end of the tube, after it's been filled with the fluid, is heated and melted, uh, sort of like a Dairy Queen ice cream cone at the end here, a little curlicue. Here's a close-up of the crystals in the bulb at the base of the bubble tube. Now we have to have some method of heating the bulb so that the dichloromethane can reach its 103 degree boiling point. And that heat is provided by a simple tubular ceramic resistor. In this case a 2500 ohm resistor. And the bulb is going to fit into the resistor like so. And you notice though that the fit's very loose, very sloppy. Now to get the dichloromethane up to 103 degrees quickly, we need to do something to force the uh, tube tightly against the side of the resistor. So the way we solve that loose fit problem is with a brass shim like this, which we insert in between the bubble tube and the resistor so that we now have a nice snug fit. Here we have the bubble tube with its tightly shimmed resistor being held vertically like it is in the jukebox by this fabulous high class piece of apparatus featuring a genuine antique clothespin straight from the Stone Age chemistry lab. And we have the two alligator clips attached. Are you ready? I'm going to plug this thing in. So shield your eyes. Make sure there's no children or pets anywhere nearby. And there we go. Here we have the trusty laser heat gun monitoring the temperature of the resistor, which is now climbing steadily. And hopefully the temperature in the bulb uh, is increasing to 103 degrees and we will initiate the boiling cycle. There it goes. It just started. Uh, the bubbles are small to begin with 
and then they will increase in size as the heat increases. Let's check the temperature. We're up, uh, let's see, let it stabilize, around 138 degrees on the resistor. And we're getting some nice bubbles. Notice that also, although the resistor temperature is uh, much higher, the temperature in the bubble tube is 103 degrees, which is exactly the boiling point of the methylene dichloride. What's happening is, as it boils and rises, it's taking the heat away from the resistor so that the temperature of the dichloromethane will never exceed 103 degrees. It also, because it removes the heat from the resistor, keeps this area down here from overheating and damaging the bubble tube or the resistor. It's much like the radiator in your car removing the heat from the engine. This is the engine and the radiator is taking the heat away from it. Well, there you have it. That's how Wurlitzer bubble tubes are made and how they work. And I hope you found this interesting and informative and that you will stay tuned for future videos in which I probe the mysteries of vintage guitar amplifiers, vintage jukeboxes, and other mysterious devices. Thanks for staying tuned and I'll see you again soon. And so it's good night from Uncle Doug and Rusty the Wonder Dog. That's my boy.